Okay, so I'm just going to read from the page where we left off in part one and keep reading to the end of the book um, to go over the pages that I skipped for the lesson. All right. Native hunters in Colombia roll the tips of their blowgun darts onto the skin of certain poison dart frogs. The poison will last for about a year. The hunters use it to kill game, but they must be very careful. The skin of one small frog can contain enough poison to kill more than a hundred people. At mating time, female frogs recognize the special croaking sound of their own species and follow it to find mates. Once the male and female are together, he fertilize the fertilizes the eggs as she lays them. Many rainforest frogs do not lay their eggs in the water. The eggs of some frogs are protected by foam nests along the water's edge or on overhanging leaves. The foam keeps the eggs moist and helps protect them from predators. Often the tadpoles hatch within the foam and rain carries them into the water. Tadpoles eat lots of food and grow fast. When a tadpole gets big enough, hind legs begin to grow. Then come the front legs and the tadpole's tail starts to shrink. As its legs grow, the tadpole changes from an animal that gets oxygen from the water to one that breathes air. Its round mouth grows into a wide frog mouth and its eyes bulge up. Now it is a tiny frog and can leave the water. Some frogs in the forest don't have tadpoles at all. These frogs live among the dead leaves under the trees. They are hard to see because of their camouflage colors. They lay their eggs in moist places on the forest floor. The eggs develop directly into little froglets. Some frogs that live high in the trees carry their eggs in pouches on their backs. The eggs develop while safely protected on their mother's back. When the little frogs are ready to hatch, the pouch splits open along the center and the youngsters struggle out into the world. Poison dart frogs have their own way of reproducing. Each male has its own territory on the forest floor. With his croaking, he warns other males to stay away. If another male challenges him, they wrestle to find out which is stronger. The wrestling match may last an hour or more. When a female joins a male for mating, he leads her to a good place to lay a small patch of eggs. Small batch of eggs. After the eggs hatch, one parent carries the tadpoles on its back to a small puddle of water. The puddle might be on the forest floor or in a plant. Many rainforest plants store water in the space where the leaves join the stem or right in their center. These small puddles are home to a great variety of life, from bacteria to mosquito larvae. Some of these creatures can be food for the tadpoles. A few species of poison dart frogs don't leave their tadpoles to find food on their own. The female puts each of her tadpoles into a different puddle. Every few days, she goes back to each puddle and lays infertile eggs, eggs that won't hatch, to feed her tadpoles. I've already read this part, but I'll just keep reading it because it's just a couple of pages until the end. The chemicals in poison dart frog skin are very interesting to scientists. Like other poisons, they can be useful as medicine in small doses. One chemical from poison dart frog skin is a more powerful painkiller than morphine. Others could be used as heart attack medicines. Frogs need homes to live in. When forests are cut down, frogs and other animals have no place to live, so they die out. Frogs that live in a limited area are especially threatened. The blue poison frog, for example, is found only in small parts of forests in the South American country of Suriname. If its home is destroyed by people harvesting wood, this frog will become extinct. Frogs have been on Earth for more than 150 million years, but today frogs are disappearing quickly from some parts of the planet. No one is sure why. Some fear that the increase in ultraviolet light reaching Earth may be to blame. Whatever is killing frogs could be a danger for other forms of life too. Scientists are working hard to understand what is happening so that the beauty and usefulness of frogs will always be with us. 
that's the end. Thanks for reading with me. See you later.